Okay, this is Adams versus Kasparov, 2005. One of Kasparov's last games before he retired. Adams played e4, and Kasparov played his favourite Sicilian defence, trying to dynamically get what Jeremy Silman would call imbalances straight away in the position. Knight f3, and Kasparov plays d6, the start of his favourite Nidorf defence, which, along with Fischer, these two were the greatest experts of the Nidorf in the history of the game. d4, cd, knight takes d4, knight f6, all standard moves so far under Nidorf. Knight c3, now black, Kasparov plays a6. a6 has the idea of stopping bishop b5 check, which might be an annoying simplifi simplification, e.g. if black played e6 straight away. Bishop b5 check, um, bishop d7 takes, it's an unnecessary simplification for black if he wants to keep the pressure in the position, the tension. So a6 is the richest move. Adams plays bishop e3, and this system which he's playing is, is sort of termed the English attack because it's characterized by f3 and queen d2 and castles king queen side with the idea of a brutal attack later pawn stone on the king side Kasparov's not too frightened by this strategy though nor by any British player um, having knocked out Nigel Short in, in the World Championship so there's been no British challenger to to ever really show that they've been stronger than Kasparov, and Adams is no exception to that. e6, bishop e2, queen c7, queen d2. So the start of this crude attacking plan of castling queen side. b5 played now a3, bishop b7, all very natural moves. So a6 and b5, bishop b7, all very natural. Pressurizing e4, f3, knight c6. Now Adams castles queen side. So generally Adams wouldn't be afraid of anyone with this kind of setup. Be expecting an easy win. Sparoff plays b4, accepting an isolated pawn straight away but getting some dynamic pressure on C file and, and B file is opened up, semi open B file. G4. Adams is not too worried at the moment. And um, this menacing threat of G five might be annoying. Bishop E seven, G five, knight D seven. However this knight's seemingly swinging in, maybe knight E five to C four, or knight B six to C four. This c4 square is unpleasant for white, but white still has no reason really to, to be concerned at this this point. h4. Now, Kasparov plays knight c5. What are these knights doing? Well, there's some more pressure again on e4. And White perhaps is a little bit uncomfortable now. Can't play knight b3 because of doubling of pawns with knight takes b3 cb. Wouldn't be that pretty. He plays king b1, rook b8. So black's delaying casting until the, until the right moment. h5. And now it seems quite menacing this. These pawns are about to smash through here to open some lines. The spa fiercely just castles anyway. G6. And he just ignores it really with bishop f6, just exploiting the fact that the pawn's now not covering f6, so just increasing the pressure on this diagonal. Rook dg1. Spraff casually just plays bishop a8, so he's increasing the pressure on the, the b file now, the semi open b file. Bishop g5. Now bishop e5 was played. Pawn takes on h7. King takes. Knight b3. 
Now knight takes c2, a bolt out of the blue. If queen takes c2, knight takes b3. So white plays knight takes c5, apparently winning a piece. But knight a3, king c2, queen takes c5. And white can't take on a3 because of queen c3. So he plays knight a4. But now there's a shocking move played by Sparov, which shows why he's such a dangerous player playing the unexpected. He plays knight c2, leaving his queen and pre. Because if knight takes c5, then rook takes b2 is mating. King b1, and now queen a3, and white simply resigned. A remarkable attacking game by Kasparov, not fearing White's attack on the king side, just casting into it. 